Hello, and thank you very much for the invitation to participate in the St. Petersburg Digital Legal Forum Nine and a Half Rule of Corona Digital Conference. Today, I would like to address the issue of the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on international arbitration. By far, the greatest impact of the virus on arbitration is the growing significance of online or virtual hearings. Today, I would like to address a few aspects of conducting arbitration hearings online. First of all, arbitration's ability to offer the parties online or virtual hearings is a great advantage and a significant opportunity during the pandemic. Arbitration is a highly flexible dispute resolution mechanism and it is able to adapt to the party's demand to continue with their case during the pandemic, even when the world is in a lockdown and participants are unable to travel. I would like to touch upon a few of the advantages and disadvantages of online hearings. What are the advantages? The most obvious advantage is the significant cost savings that it offers to parties. It is far cheaper for all participants to stay in their home jurisdictions in front of a computer, just like we are now, and to conduct the hearings from the conference of their own home. Also, another aspect to consider, which might perhaps not be so obvious, is the reduction in the carbon footprint of the business. International arbitration involves a lot of traveling and if online hearings become more and more frequent or who knows, they may become the new norm or the default way of conducting hearings, that can re lead to a significant reduction in carbon footprint, which of course is highly beneficial to the environment. What are the challenges or the potential drawbacks of online or virtual hearings? First of all, online hearings will not be suitable for every type of arbitration, perhaps due to their complexity, the number of participants, or the sensitivity of the issues at stake. Also, online hearings may not be suitable for every stage of the arbitration. It may be suitable for evidentiary hearings, opening or closing submissions, but may well be less suitable for cross-examination where the in-person or live in-flash connection between counsel and the witness is of primary importance. Another very important question that we must ask ourselves is, can we ensure procedural fairness and the equal treatment of, of the parties in an online hearing or in the virtual space. Seemingly simple organizational matters, such as the different time zones of the parties, may potentially give rise to procedural complaints further down the line. What should arbitrators do if one of the parties, typically the respondent, tries to use the pandemic as a tactical tool in order to delay proceedings? It will be important to anticipate these kind of strategic or tactical moves by respondents and arbitrators will have to develop a very sensitive and nuanced approach to these kind of submissions. These kind of submissions may be done in good faith or not in good faith. And often it may be difficult to establish which scenario we are dealing with. Finally, treating the parties equally and fairly during online hearings is extremely important also because of the enforcement of the arbitral award. The party who lost the arbitration may well argue 
in front of the domestic court during enforcement that the lack of fairness or lack of equal treatment during the online hearing constituted a procedural irregularity that now should stand in the way of the enforcement of the arbitral award. Given that one of the key, if not the most important attraction of arbitration is the finality and enforceability of the arbitral award, this will also be a key challenge in the future.